Greetings, the Pleiadians, the true story of humanity. A special message to the star seeds of the new Earth for immediate planetary broadcast. The Pleiadians often tell stories designed to bring you to higher levels of consciousness. Tonight, we will tell you the great story of humanity's true past. There is the mainstream story, and then there is the true and whole story. Telling the true and whole story is why we came to Earth. This data stream is lengthy, so it's good to go back and read this transmission again slowly. Later, so the light here is integrated. Take notes and seek deeper now into all of this. Great one. Many magnificent and advanced civilizations have inhabited the Earth in prehistory. Most of these civilizations were human-like. However, none of these ancient human races originated on Earth. The wisdom keepers of every culture on Earth today tell the same story of their ancestors coming to Earth from the stars. Millions of years ago, small groups of 5D star nations migrated to Earth. And these first star travelers to Earth are known as pre-Adamites. These grand beings were the Lemurians, the Atlanteans of prehistory. Advanced humanoids from the Pleiades and ultimately from the Lyra star system. These first humanoid beings that came to Earth were the original terraformers of Earth. They introduced advanced humanoids, ancestors of Eurectus and Neanderthal, which would later be DNA upgraded by the Anunnaki into modern Homo sapien humans. These original advanced terraformers and world planners left Earth at different periods and for different reasons. Millions of years ago and returned to the fifth dimension. Some groups in the Sirius star system tried marriage between loyal lineages to create a dynasty to unite everyone. But many Lyrans refused loyalty to this new dynasty loyals of the combined would be unity kingdom moved to their own area of the cosmos and settled on the planet Nibiru which would shoot out of its original orbit around Sirius C to a path that crosses Earth's inner solar system and clockwise off to an elongated orbit to Nemesis. The somewhat cold remains of Sirius C. These Syrian beings are the Anunnaki. Some factions of this Anunnaki dynasty traveled to Earth 445,000 years ago in great star ships to obtain monatomic gold and mineral resources to have their planet's atmosphere. The plan by Nibiru scientists and the High Council was to spray crushed white powder monatomic gold into Nibiru's atmosphere to create a metallic shield around their planet to deflect the harsh rays 
and heat of their solar star. The Anunnaki are a fifth dimensional human like race with advanced knowledge, ability, and technology. These beings are both reptilian and human. However, they were beautiful in physical appearance. They are able to live in physical bodies for tens of thousands of years. The telomeres in their DNA never deteriorate, allowing body cells to copy and reproduce themselves perpetually. They achieved long life by drinking the wine of life fused with Anunnaki stem cells and by eating the bread of life. White monatomic gold powder cakes. The Anunnaki interbred within their family to ensure their loyal bloodline remained pure. And these star beings were much taller, larger, and stronger than modern humans. The Anunnaki dynasty was a structured and rigid group of ETS with supersized egos and dominating personalities. Through they were very intelligent, powerful, and godlike. They often made human like mistakes. They were frequently in disagreement with and very jealous of their own family members. Eventually, leading to large earth wars in those ancient times, the Anunnaki believed in a prime creator god they were subject to. However, they also refer to themselves as gods with the divine right to rule. Father Anu, king of the royal Syrian dynasty, his two sons Enlil and Enki, and their immediate family members are the primary Anunnaki beings that played the most important roles in Earth's history. Any story about gods with supernatural powers walking the Earth in ancient times is about these beings. These are the shining ones that from heaven to Earth came. The Anunnaki were meticulous record keepers and recorded every event that occurred every day on clay and stone tablets. These prehistorical records cover the entire span of the Anunnaki stay on Earth. Several hundreds of thousand years. Unfortunately, Many of the stone tablets were buried under miles of sediment during the Great Flood 12,600 years ago. But tens of thousands of these stone and clay tablets have been discovered in modern times. Even so, only a handful of them has been researched and deciphered. The best modern translations are 98% confluent, and these translations tell a fantastic account of what occurred in Earth's prehistory. The story inscribed in stone aligns with ancient historical religions, writings. However, the Anunnaki stone tablets fill in every missing detail. Answer every confusing ancient mystery and tell quite a different story 
than most have heard. Several Anunnaki tablets describe the first spaceship journey from Nibiru past the inner planets through the asteroid belt towards Earth and details of the first Anunnaki landing on Earth. The records detail to use of navigational computers, LCD screens on the Anunnaki ship plus an onboard communication system that could beam messages back to Nibiru. These ships were also armed with nuclear missiles and these were filled that blast a path for the ship through the hammered bracelet, aka the asteroid belt. The first Anunnaki visitor from Nibiru, Alalu, landed on Earth KI in a green spacecraft, splashing down in one of Earth's seas near the land of Mesotomia. The Anunnaki called this land Eden. The space traveler waited ashore in an eagle's bird helmet for breathing air and a fish suit for protection from the sea and a possible harsh atmosphere. The first ET visitor noted no human like beings were present when he scanned the earth. Alalu found himself on an alien planet where he quickly tested the atmosphere and found the air was breathable and the atmosphere was safe. Next, he tested the ocean waters for gold with special instruments and discovered gold was abundant. After reporting back to Nibiru that he had indeed found gold on Earth, the Nibirian Council mounted a scout mission and headed for Earth. Enki Enkia was on board this second craft. After landing and greeting Alalu, the scout team used incredible Earth moving and building technology to create the first Anunnaki Earth settlement in six days. This first Nibirian city in this Eden was named Eridu, which means home in the far away. Eridu was created as a lush and magnificent paradise for the Anunnaki. And when it was done, the Anunnaki saw that it was good and they rested on the seventh day. Eridu is located in southern Mesotomia in modern Iraq and rightfully so is considered the first and oldest city on earth today. In time, this initial Anunnaki settlement expanded to a full-pledged earth mission that featured a spaceport mission control center mining operations and even a way station on Mars. Monumental Anunnaki stone cities and mining operations were eventually erected all across planet Earth. The Anunnaki were masters of science, chemistry, astronomy, math, agriculture, physics, and magic let alone being master miners, metallurgists, and architects. They used incredible technical devices called Mies and Tablets of Destinies comparable to modern day quantum computers. Complex software and advanced databases to plan 
and build their mining empire and cities on Earth. They brought very large and powerful machines and stone cutting tools when they came that could easily slice off the side of a mountain and leave no debris. They could cut, process, move and feed large numbers of megalithic stone blocks with incredible precision, speed and ease. The ancient stone tablets refer to their power tools as crystal beams and huge diamond cutting devices to cut and quarry, granite and other hard stone. Other massive machines were brought from Nibiru to bore, cut, scoop, scrape and grind away huge amounts of stone and earth. Stone softening technology and liquid stone molds were used in many of their structures. Ultrasonic anti-gravity as well as their own giant crafts were used to lift and transport megaliths. Some of the foundation stones used in their space ports and mission control facilities such as Nippur, Baalbek, Giza, and Mount Moria weighed up to several thousand tons to withstand the massive force and weight of Niburian gold transport crafts landing and taking off. Every ancient, megalithic and complex stone structure on planet Earth whose construction cannot be explained today, was built by the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were an advanced builder race that recorded intricate details of the building of every ancient megalithic structure and city on Earth. These were all built within the time frame of 450,000 to 11,500 years ago. These massive stone structures were built by supernatural extraterrestrials not only for functionality but as a testament to their builders that would last forever in stone. It's important to note that many prehistoric megaliths were also later constructed by the Anunnaki's giant offspring, which feature super tall doors and rooms. Moving these huge stones around and reaching high places was like child's play to them. All the stories in ancient religious writings, including Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Judaism, are accounts of the Anunnaki. Each of these ancient religious writings was fully derived from the much older and much detailed Anunnaki cuneiform records. And down through the ages, mankind intentionally censored and edited versions of these writings to reflect what is represented today to counsel the truth. The Hebrew Bible is one example of this censorship and editing this are numerous critical, mistranslated words and the majority of the original story was left out of the public's view. The most glaring mistranslations is the use of the word God in the Hebrew Bible. 
the original and correct word here from the ancient tablets is Elohim, which means plural gods, not just one god. Also, the ingenious plan to change and cover up the original story obviously was not given much thought, as the verse below illustrates. Come, let us create man in our image. Who is us and our? Someone also let the truth slip twice when they left. Come, let us go down and there and confuse human language. The original stone records that contain the story of Genesis tell the exact story, except there are no mistranslations and all the details are filled in. These plural so-called gods are the Anunnaki dynasty and specifically they are Father Anu and his two sons Enki and Enlil. A different point in the Bible the word God refers to one or more of his beings and, in some cases, their immediate children, siblings, or spouses. Anyone who reads the translations of the ancient Sumerian tablets will conclude that Brother and Lil did not care the least for mankind. He was a dominant controller that committed crimes against humanity like his father, Anu. And Lil is the god in the Bible that said, Kill everyone in the city, including the women and children. He is the one who said, I regret creating humans. Let them all die in the food and wipe them off the face of the earth. At times he says things that give his personality away like I'm a jealous or wrathful god. On the other hand, Enki had a different spirit and was more compassionate and caring for humankind. When you hear of God in the Hebrew Bible, getting upset, angry, or jealous. It is an Enlil or his father. If it is God being loving and compassionate, it is always Enki. This is also why in one breath, the God in the Hebrew Bible says, I love you more than anything in the universe. But in the next breath, he says, however, if you screw up sin, I will burn and torture you forever and ever. These mistranslated versions of the authentic original story with correct details left out can never make logical sense and can never help anyone. Again, it is plural gods, the Elohim, Anunnaki, with different personalities operating in the Bible under the wrong label, single God. The story of recreation of mankind is another critical area where mistranslated and censored biblical texts lead to serious issue. Add to this the modern concept of Darwinism and the distorted version of ancient history presented to the world. And the beings of earth would never figure out where they came from and who they are. After mining the gold of earth for almost 100,000 years, 
Anunnaki, IGGI, workers grew tired of the hard labor and started complaining the Anunnaki authorities. The Niburian High Council discussed the matter and agreed to allow the creation of these worker beings and assign the job to Enki, his consort, Ninma, and Enki's son, Ningazida. All master genetics. Enki fashioned the primitive worker by fusing the DNA of the API like creatures that boomed the earth in those days with Anunnaki DNA. This one successful attempt at creating humans worked only because the DNA of the earth being had to literally be combined with the life-giving minerals found only in the clay of earth. The Elohim had created the first human on planet Earth in the paradise of Eden and named his Adamo. It is written that Eve Tiamat was created soon after from the DNA bone marrow from one of the Adam's ribs. These Earth humans were later given the genetic ability to procreate so more workers could be automatically created. The goal of the Anunnaki was to have a barely intelligent worker that could use tools, be easily controlled, and follow orders. At first, the creators intently left the genetics about the second strand of DNA dormant in the first created Earth's humans. Through the overall goal of creating humans was to be servants and workforce for the Anunnaki. The ancient tablets say Enki had a loving emotional connection to the, his human creation. He described them as his blood children and cared for them as such. There were numerous events after Earth humans were created, where Enki took care of them and protected them from the indifference of the other Anunnaki. Enki made sure he gave humans the extra divine spark when he created this and so they could eventually realize they were their own dogs. Later on, in this human creation story, Enki went behind his brothers and family's backs and gave humans the genetics fruit of the Anunnaki tree of knowledge and the divine spark of higher consciousness in the paradise of Eden. When the Anunnaki started the whole process of creating humans, they did not know the implications of what would unfold from it all. The truth is, they created something much greater than were that contained the pure divine spark. Now Enki had upgraded the humanity to superintelligence even higher than the Anunnaki. When angry brother and Liv became aware of this, he said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now he might reach out his hand and also take from the tree of life and eat and live forever. And Lil banished the first two humans from the Anunnaki paradise Eden. And overall, the genes of human immortality were left in dormant mode. Even so, once again, Enki went all out and infused on of his human creations with the genetic fruit of the tree of long life. 
and these long life genetics were passed down to certain human children. This action by Enki, coupled with the interpreting of Anunnaki Iji, melds the sons of God with earth women spawning hellacious giant children was the beginning of the end for early earth humans. The IGG lover ranking Anunnaki walkers on Mars, aka the Watchers, had entered the forbidden area of space during a gold mining transport mission. When they emerged, they were said to have been infected by the spirit of the Archons. After this, they began to lust strongly for Earth's human females. Together, 200 IGG swore an oath and made a sacred plan to come to Earth and abduct human females as wives. The IGG descended to Earth and landed at an Anunnaki facility on Mount Hermon at the Southern Age of the Setter Mountain, ranged to attend the wedding on Enki San Marduk. On the mountain was a huge platform known as the landing space called Baalbek, meaning a place for the access of gods only. After Marduk's wedding ceremony, the 200 IgG abducted human women and demanded the wives have offspring with them. They taught earth females all manner of charms and magic. And the wives of the IGG bore angelic human hybrid giants as children that wreak havoc on the planetary level. The IGG were also genetic masters and they began to genetically combine animals with humans, defiling all flesh on the earth. These watchers giant witch children continued until the entire earth became completely defiled. So the Anunnaki High Council decided to take drastic measures. These 200 IGG were brought to justice and branded as the fallen angels by Anunnaki authorities. And Lil banished these fallen angels into the lover parts of the earth as punishment for 70 earth generations. Soon after, around 12,500 years ago, Nibiru was moving through Earth's solar system on its 3,600-year orbit. The chief scientists of the Syrian dynasty in the Shah proclaimed a dire space weather forecast for planet Earth as the massive planet Nibiru was coming in very for a near-Earth flyby. After much discussion by the consuls on how to remove the wicked hybrid giant children from Earth and after Enlil presented his case against Enki's Earth's humans, it was indeed decreed by the Father God, Anu, to keep the news of the coming Earth calamity from all beings on Earth and to allow them to all be wiped out by the waters of the Great Flood. After the destiny of humanity had been decreed, Enki went out of this way to try to save humanity from what was coming. He managed to secretly save a few of his beloved human secretions, Noah and his family, all well as samples of all DNA on Earth to repopulate and replenish the Earth 
after the great flood. The great wing red destroyer, Nibiru, then came close to Earth, and its magnetic net force was so strong that it completely overtook the Earth. As the gods watches from their ships above the earth, the massive ice plates from the north and the south rushed into the oceans, and the mighty oceans rose six miles into the skies. The ice age was ended abruptly by the great deluge, and all of humanity and all that existed on the surface had been wiped off the face of the planet. During the first shower after the Great Deluge, the waters had receded and dry land appeared. The Syrian dynasty landed back on the surface of Earth and began at once to rebuild their cities in global gold mining empire. Enki San Ningazida Thoth was tasked with building a new Anunnaki space port in the land of Hem called Ekur, the Great Mountain, aka the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Enki lamented over these human creations, and there was much discussion among the family about all that had happened on earth after much contemplation and Lil agrees that human beings should be made again primarily because the Anunnaki still needed walkers. It was agreed and established by Father King Anu and these new earth human creations would be less fertile, have a shorter lifespan and would be less conscious than their predecessors. The Anunnaki wanted to make sure the new earth humans would never it would also decree that the divine right to rule would be handed down from the Anunnaki to hybrid human earth rulers. Anu agreed to give these human hybrid kings all Anunnaki knowledge for building an advanced society on earth. The issue is this human kings would still have to answer in full to send your Anunnaki back to Nibiru. Enki's other son Marduk felt treated unfairly in this whole earth mission because he was always rejected or overlooked as a leader on earth. He became very bitter about this treatment and decided to seize power. The Anunnaki were often worse than humans when it came to war and frequently battled against their own kind. With terrible destruction being the result, infighting increased among the Anunnaki family in the Great War broke out on earth between Enlil and Enki's families, where weapons of mass destruction were used in the Sinai Peninsula at Sodom and Gomorrah that took many lives on earth. The Anunnaki eventually left earth and left their human hybrid bloodline kings in charge. After the Watchers of Mount Hermon were released from their 70 years of punishments, they were given a chance by Senior Anunnaki to redeem themselves. The Anunnaki rulers assigned them the task of assisting the new human kings in taking care of Operation Earth. These fallen angels and ex-criminals were still under probation and close watch by the Anunnaki. 
and to make sure they could not escape earth. An energetic field was placed around the earth so they could not escape. These fallen beings decided that since they were imprisoned on earth, they might as well take over the place and create a nasty playground for themselves. What's worse is Bitsa's son Martik eventually took over total rulership of planet Earth. And the bloodline hybrid kings of Earth have been under his authority ever since. Along with the helper minions, the IGGI, the fallen ones. Marduk is still in control of planet Earth today. He is the god of this world, and he runs the show. If you are looking for the bad guy, he is the ultimate one. Is there truly a good guy in this story? Regardless of what the Anunnaki did as a whole on earth, Enki is the true creator of humanity. He went against the entire Anunnaki dynasty to give humanity to the divine spark that allows for higher consciousness and long life. Since the Anunnaki are of the series star system and descendants of Lyran humanoids who had the general benevolent nature, Not all Anunnaki have had bad intentions towards humanity. And Enki was the prime example. Enki nurtured his first creations, Adamo and Tiamat, in Eden and stated they would not be slaves to anyone. When and lived through these first humans out of Eden, Enki placed them in another paradise. What's more, if Enki had not inverted on humanity's behalf with Noah during the catalysm of 12,000 years ago, there was a chance that modern humans would not have existed Enki nurtured his second. Upgraded creations, Adapa and Titi, and taught them all of his sacred knowledge in every situation. And he showed mercy and gave the benefit to others. He was the best father to his children and gave them the highest love, even when they were not behaving well. Furthermore, after Enki created the first human, he became personally and emotionally involved with his creations and quickly changes his position above the slave agenda. He always gave Enki some credit because he was a benevolent being who compassionately cared about humanity. In his own words, Enki wrote later how much he regretted what the Anunnaki had done on planet Earth, and he vowed to come back and make it right with humanity one day in Earth's future. Great One, this is the true story of humanity's origins and prehistory and its correct events that have led up to now. The his story is bittersweet and may be hard to hear, but it is the truth and something that everyone must investigate on a deeper level and come to terms with. The great question Since Marduk is still running the world today, 
How does humanity break free from this long period of manipulation and deception? The plan for this world has always been to keep humanity in the dark with no information, so they will never be aware of anything. And Lil himself said, an educated human is a dangerous human. He knew that if humans were ever to wake up and see what happened to them and what is still happening to them, the game would be over. The Great Awakening is occurring on Earth. Now, however, humanity needs more information presented to them until the full truth is realized. Many master teachers on the planet today work hard each day to bring the true light to humanity. These light beings are doing the most important work that can be done to assist humanity. It is critical to, that one does in-depth research into what truly happened in ancient times so one can see for themselves and bring this light to others. It is the destiny of humans to be filled with the light of consciousness, becoming free with Sotheran beings forevermore. The universe has its own way of dealing with all of this, and at just the right moment, it will send a powerful wave of lights to Earth called the Great Solar Flash that will fully illuminate the conscious awareness and all of being on earth at the moment every truth shall be known in the coming weeks and months you will see the issue of what occurred in earth's prehistory coming more into the forefront of human consciousness there will be much public discussion about this topic but this is a good sign and is required until the truth settles. Regardless of what has happened in Earth's ancient past, you have the divine spark of divinity within you. You are becoming fully conscious of many new things and have evolved your soul now to much higher level. You are now finishing your job becoming all you are. And when you are done, you will be gloriously triumphant. The light is truth, and this truth is all freedom. God's speed. Michael and the Pleiadians. Feel free to share your thoughts about what we have said Share any experience you may have had and let us know how you are doing on your great spiritual journey.